Um, quick word about who I am and what uh, my company does. So I'm a tech support engineer at Eliatra. Um, we specialize in open search in various departments. So we have 24 hours support for the enterprise. Uh, we have professional services, training, workshops, consulting, hosting, and so on. So the list is pretty long. I'm not going to go through it, but this is just kind of a, a short list of the products that we offer. So what we're going to cover today, we're going to create a um, self-signed certificate. Uh, it's always a pain point for the users. Uh, we're going to create a pr production ready certificate using Let's Encrypt um, so that the browser is not complaining about um, unknown certificate. And we're going to use Helm charts and operator to deploy it in Kubernetes and look at the caveats uh, using both methods and uh, some of the differences in role and updates. So I'm assuming that uh, you are aware of what Kubernetes is and uh, how to configure the security on open search like uh, internal users, roles, and role mappings, etc. So before we begin, we need the uh, EKS cluster, obviously, and uh, to get one running, it's only a few lines of, um, of code. In this case, I'm creating a five-node cluster uh, using the EKS uh, control tool. The problem is, if you do this yourself at home, you'll be able, you won't be able to create the EBS volumes because there's no uh, CSI driver for them. So we'll fix that real quick. We need to get the role name, which is the command at the very top. We create a policy. In this case, it gives the full access to any EC2. And then we attach the policy um, to the role. And uh, we install the EBS driver using the command at the very bottom. That's just kind of boilerplate to make sure that we can get everything else up and running. So ultimately, what we're building is we have our open source cluster um, fully secured with the self-signed certificates. Those certificates are used to talk internally amongst the nodes and the dashboards, but outside the world of that cluster, nobody knows what that certificate is. And therefore, we're going to use Ingress, in this case, Nginx Ingress, which will use Let's Encrypt certificate, which is trusted. Um, and everybody can access it, and the browser will not complain um, about any um, issues. So the first thing to do is to create, uh, is to install Cert Manager. Uh, it's only four lines of code, and you should see three pods running in the Cert Manager namespace. That's just needed to be able to create the certificates going forward. The important part here is the, the very last part of the fourth command, which is the install CRD is equal to true. Just don't forget that. So then it's a two-step process every time. We create a cluster issuer, and then we create a certificate. So in this case, we create a cluster issuer, which is self-signed, which is highlighted in bold. And then the second step is to create the actual certificate, which is on the right-hand side there, using that cluster issuer. So that's the first step. And every, every file, of course, in Kubernetes will just uh, apply with uh, kubectl apply and then the, the file name. Once that is applied, we can see that the CA and the TLS cert are both the same size, and that is because it's the same file, which is where the name self-signed comes from. Once we have that self-signed certificate authority, we can create the certificates we need off of that authority. So we're going to create transport and, and HTTP layer certificate, dashboard certificates, and the admin certificate for use with security admin and other APIs. Um, very same way, we create cluster issuer, like we did the first time. But now we specify which CA we need to sign this certificate. And once we have that, we create all the different certificates for transport, HTTP, dashboards, and admin. Uh, you can configure the durations, the um, usage. The important part of uh, node certificates is the usage has to be the server auth and client auth, because they act as both clients and servers when they talk to each other. Once we have all that running, this is just an uh, example of what they look like once they're created. You will have your TLS. Um, Secrets, which have three files every time, which is the CA cert, the TLS cert, and the TLS key. Um, that's just an example of the fact that the, CAA, that the CA cert is the one that we created 
originally, which is the which is why the bytes match up. So those are self-signed certificates. They're not trusted by anybody. So in this case, we are going to use Let's Encrypt to create production-ready certificates, which years ago was a very um, long-winded process and expensive and involved quite a bit of time and, and paperwork, which is now done in a matter of seconds using things like Let's Encrypt. We, can, we need to prove the ownership of the domain. We can't just create a Let's Encrypt cert for google.com or apple.com. It has to be our own domain. And as a, res as a result of that, we need to prove that it's our own. We use the HTTP challenge, but you need to use port 80. If that's not open in your cluster, you will have to use DNS challenge. And we'll go through the examples of both. First thing we need to do is install Ingress controller to be able to solve that challenge. Again, this is just those three lines of code. They're very straightforward, and you will have a pod running. And uh, this is the HTTP challenge. So there, is, there are two servers. One is staging, one is prod. Um, the problem with prod is you have quotas, so you can only, I don't know what the limit is, but it could be like 10 a day or something like this, which is essentially more than enough for running a cluster. But you should use the staging server where, when you're doing testing. And this is the HTTP challenge. And this is the DNS challenge. It's a little bit more involved, a bit more uh, configuration. You need the secret, and, and so on. And we can move on to the next one as well here. So let's encrypt certificates. So I wonder if this passed. Yeah, that was it. So then in this case, we create an, a certificate um, for um, we are naming it TLS for open search key. That's the secret name that we are going to use in the future. And uh, it uses the server auth and the client auth as well. So we can move on to Helm. So when you go to Helm repo, you will come across two different directories. One is for open search, one is for open search dashboards. And in those repos, you will find the values file, which is at the very bottom of the screenshots, uh, the, the second two. And the values file is a very long file, so I can only extract certain parts of it to demonstrate here. But the part on the left, for example, is where you configure the security configuration, so the roles, the role mappings, etc. And on the right-hand side, then, you are mapping the secrets, which is the certificates that you have created. Then you have any extra environment variables, and then the open search YAML file, which is the one that we are probably very familiar with. Similarly for dashboards, it's, it's one values file. You have the very same case, the secrets. And then you have the um, open source account. So in this case, the username and the password is not um, listed in the file for obvious reasons. It will be entered as the secret. So let's first create that secret, which looks like the second file over here. Um, the name we give it is open search dashboards account, and it should match up to this one uh, at the bottom right as well. So that's the secret. So that's all the configuration. So once we apply these two, you will have a dashboard and open search cluster up and running. There is a problem with this approach, and that is if you wanted to have a cluster with master, with data, with client nodes, you will have to have separate Helm deployments for each one which makes it very difficult to manage. In the real world, companies that use Helm usually build a layer on top of Helm to be able to manage that for them because nobody wants to mess with this for obvious reasons. The problem with Helm deployments. So as I mentioned, the separate nodes will require separate um, deployments. But more importantly, in my opinion, is the rolling updates. So when the rolling updates happen in Helm, they don't disable shard allocation. So although it's done on one node at a time, it's done on infrastructure level, not on open source level. So it doesn't check if the cluster is healthy before it moves on to the next one. It just kind of like bulldozers across every node and restarts it and hopes that it works. Uh, there is a workaround using the pre and post hooks, but it involves a bit of knowledge in Helm. 
And that's where the operator comes in, and it's super handy for that. Uh, single node clusters are not supported at this moment in time. It's very easy to get it up and running using those two lines of code above. And you'll have two nodes running, which is the cube RBAC proxy and the controller manager. Um, from that point onwards, you only have one file. It is a very long file. Uh, it has a lot of configuration. Um, we'll go through the configuration now. But uh, it is the new kind of open search cluster file because uh, we installed the CRDs when we installed the operator itself. The beauty in this one is that now you have separate node pools. You have a node pool for nodes, for masters, and you can separately configure the memory limits, the allocation, the roles, the replicas um, individually um, for each node pool. And the TLS configuration, the reason why we went through the self-signed is because now you can see that open source does exactly the same thing for you. It does all the heavy lifting if you set the generate equals to true. And as a result of that, it will create the same certificate authority that we just did. It will create the same certificates that we did, except everything will be done for you on the fly. If you do, however, decide to import your own, there is a bit more configuration that you need to list. Um, and that's for transport layer. For HTTP layer, it's very, very similar, except there is no pair node uh, certificate. So it's, it's one across uh, the whole cluster. And uh, if you import on your own, then you need to mention those names in the sun names as well. So that's the configuration for the TLS. Then additional open search configuration can be done in general or node pool level. Obviously, the node pool level will overwrite the general one if you mention the same config in both. But bear in mind, these are added as environment variables in the pods. So if you enter the pod and you have a look at the open source YAML file, you won't find these values there. And you might be confused as to why it works while the values are not there. It's because they are added as environment, variable, environment variables. And uh, as a result, um, they are read in at runtime as well. Now, the security configuration for the open source cluster in operator uh, can be done in two ways. So my favorite way is the first one. That's the one that I'm kind of used to working with. Uh, there is a new way using the operator resources. You just don't use both at the same time because they will end up overwriting each other. Um, the original way is to create a secret with all the configuration, the action groups, the internal users, roles, role mappings, so on and so forth. And then under the security config section, you just mentioned that secret that has been created. Um, the second way, the new way, is to use the CRDs created with the operator, which is the open search user, role, role bindings, and so on. It's the new way. I haven't really played around with this too much, um, but it is definitely uh, an option. The max, so there's a lot of settings with operator that you can play with. The important one, for example, is the set VM max map count. I'm sure we've, seen, we've all seen that error, that you, it needs to be at least 262, 144. Um, so it can be set using these settings. The issue with this is um, it creates init containers which run with elevated privileges. If that's not something that you can use, you can switch them off entirely uh, using the second uh, parameter at the bottom right there, uh, the skip init containers. The dashboard configuration is very similar to previous configuration that we've seen. Um, you have additional configs and the variable substitution as well works out of the box. So it's all very handy. So that's all pretty straightforward, I think. The HTTPS side, is, again, is identical to what we've seen on the open search. Um, so on the dashboard side, uh, you configure it exactly the same way, essentially. Um, we will use Let's Encrypt one in Ingress to be able to um, access it. So this is not a full list, but it kind of covers the gist of what's available with Open Search, which you can configure. And um, going forward, the only one that I will bring your attention to the most, I suppose, is the small scaler. If you need to downscale your open source cluster, previously there was no way to drain the node. You would have to go in manually and drain the node and then remove it. Whereas with operator now, you can 
uh, reduce the number of nodes and before killing that node, it will drain it first and then remove it. So that's, that, that's a very handy um, tool to have. Now, this is where the rolling updates, this, this is where the, op the operator really shows its strength is that when it does the rolling update, and it does it quite a lot because every time it detects new changes, it will trigger a rolling restart. It will check, it will disable the shard allocation per node and check that the cluster is healthy before moving on to the next node. So this happens in a safe manner and it will happen if you, if you change any uh, configuration, not just in opensource.yaml file, but also in resources, in labels, in annotations, and so on. The only thing is the downgrades and upgrades that spawn more than one major version are not supported at the moment. Certification expiration, this is a big one, and it should be in big red letters. Certificates are generated by open storage are valid for one year. There is no renewal implemented at this moment in time. So if you go on prod right now with certificates with operator, generated by operator, it will die in one year. So make sure you have some sort of plan of action as to how you're going to attack it. There is ways and means. Uh, when you create a new secret or you override the existing secret, they automatically load it in, into the containers and you can use the hot reload API so that will hot reload the certificates. And then the last step is we're gonna expose our cluster that we have just configured. In this case, we're using that secret called TLS for dashboards key pair. And that was the secret that we created when we created Let's Encrypt certificates. So it will point to a service called Dashboards Open Search Dashboards, very great name. And, um, and we'll be able to access it remotely. And um, yeah, that is, uh, that is me. So what we covered is we created and configured the EKS cluster, we deployed Cert Manager, we created a self-signed certificate authority. Using that certificate authority, we signed our own certificates, which weren't trusted by anybody else except our own cluster, which is why we created Let's Encrypt certificates. Then we configured Open Search using Helm and using Operator, and we had a look at the rolling updates. And that is... That is it from my side.